better if we could get him a little better technique, you know, swinging it on plane and yep. doing this too. And that's kind of probably where Charlie was coming from. Would it would it help to do that? Oh yeah, absolutely, it will help. Mm -hmm. Because, well first of all, the closer it is to the actual swing pattern, the more functional it is. I mean, you know, and we talked about, and I can't remember, I, I repeat myself a lot, so if it's redundant, I apologize, but, you know, like, you can be functional in the gym, what they call functional is like, to say, a, a chop and lift. You know, you're, you're on a, you're, you're kneeling down, you've got a, a cable, you pull, you press, a chop lift. That's functional, but it's not really functional. I mean, you're not doing it at speed, you're not, you don't know, golf club in your hand, you're not standing up on two feet, all that kind of stuff. So this is a good exercise to bridge from the gym over, but you gotta have something in the middle that's like virtually at speed. No, like back in the day, and it's still actually kind of true, uh, they used to use like isokinetics as a, a, a training mechanism and as a testing mechanism for like say, you know, like someone had gone through an AC, ACL reconstruction and you'd go through these patterns of, it, uh, like kind of sp contraction, flexion, extension kind of patterns or something with your knee, and you do it as fast as you can. It, it, first of all, it's open chain. You know, you can never attain the types of speed you're gonna when you're running and jumping and moving. It was kind of a, it was supposed to meant to be like a functional evaluation. Can you go back to playing football? Can you go back to do whatever you're doing? And it was really not all that functional, you know? So same thing, like, when you do the exercises, the, the closer you get to the actual activity, the better off you're gonna be. But when, when we go through this stuff tomorrow, more about the application stuff, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a progression to what we do, and then there's a progression to how you look at it. And if someone can't stabilize and sort of dissociate, what their arms are doing really doesn't matter. Sure. So yeah, and then you just confuse them. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's some papers online you guys can read if you want. There's, a, there's some theory, like when you look at the mathematics, which are kind of complicated, you actually see that when you look at the mathematics of energy or momentum transfer, um, you actually get Theoretically, you get graphs that essentially look like this, right? When you actually just, rather than math, like theoretically calculate it and just measure in the best golfers in the world, measure their hip speed, shoulder speed, arm speed, club speed, this is what basically comes out. I mean, this is virtually identical to what the, the theory or the math would tell you. You get the same thing just, you know, from making the measurements. And so what you'll get is lower body accelerating. So the force is applied here. And we'll talk about how it's done, but you get this lower body accelerate, and then you can think of yourself as having some connective tissue in there. So this, this accelerates, this gets stretched, this contracts, this slows down, this accelerates. So you get acceleration, you should be getting also load, and then when this contracts, you get decel, and the next segment accelerates off of that. And then what's gonna happen is if you look at the peaks, it's an exponential increase in the impact because the further you get out the whip, the combination of momentum transfer and contraction, and you get this incredible uh, like kind of burst of speed at the very end. And the other thing is, what you're looking at here, we'll get more when we talk about the graphs, is you're looking at the speed, rotational speed versus time. So this is the speed, not the displacement. The next level of this is acceleration. Acceleration uh, is going to be uh, directly related to force output, because force is mass times acceleration. So if you actually look at the steepness, the steeper that line, the more acceleration, so the steeper that line, the more force output you have. So as you get closer, it's not only about distal and speed, like output, but it's about what I talked about yesterday, explosiveness or quickness. That's your acceleration. The more, the steeper, the more explosive, the more force output, the longer you hit the ball. So it's funny because distal and speed is important. You know, 100 mile an hour club head speed. That stuff's important because that's a part of, of, of momentum transfer. But acceleration and quickness and where that comes from has just as much to do with how far the ball goes. So, you know, understanding all this, um, <coughs> how do we allow you to hit the ball further, but do it more efficiently? So. Oh. Uh, leaning back. Leaning back, back just a little bit. There's eight of us. Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have made it. Bring us a minute. That looked like Ivan. That'd be great. Top floor, Beth Mayo. Yeah. You know that uh, guy with the little boy that comes in and eats lunch all summer? That's Ivan. Yeah. You should oh, see him ski, man. He's, 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 he's unbelievable. Is he the kid that talks like, yeah. insatiably? Oh. Yeah. Oh, does anyone make it on a snowboard? <laughs> like, is this like a big plot, just a big space of jello? Oh, you haven't yeah. seen it? Yeah. Oh, you didn't see there it. There were two guys that went in there and, and got some gel out and <laughs> ate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I put that up a couple of days ago. Um, 
I'll have to fix it. I'll probably fix the other one tonight. So. Thank <laughs> you. 